Hello, we're back. We are back for we, another one. We are. Quick costume change. Uh, uh, well, not. Didn't. Um, we should probably Do change that. some stuff. Yeah. Like sit with different stuff. Wig. Yeah, yeah glasses. Sombrero. Just swap. Just swap yeah, yeah, clothes yeah. or something. Yeah. Like um, I hope loads of people are watching. Uh, and if you are, uh, tell everybody about it. Please tell yeah. everyone. We're desperate. Yeah. Share us on Instagram. Anything. Tag us on something. Anything. Just, uh, just anything. Take any, any, any sort of social proof or share. With nice. nobody's, nobody's sharing them. No, they're not. It's just us. Brill. Talking <laughs> share with into your mates. the abyss. If you've got any mates like us. Yeah. That's the problem, see. Mm. Um, anyway. It's not very shareable stuff, though. Because, like, most online coaches aren't going to... I don't know if they're going to. Sh- I don't know whether they're, they're going to share, share it with an online coach because they're going to. Oh, they know the secrets as yeah, well now, so they're just we sh- we've messed so, up, really, haven't we? we yeah. Done it, right? Never mind. Maybe us wrong. Maybe Proof maybe go wrong. and share it. Share it with your mate as an online yeah. coach. <clears throat> um, anyway, we're down a mic from Bicester Manor, and yeah. uh, we help coaches um, get a better business basically by telling you what we've done and how we've done things to get where we are, so that you can improve your way of doing things. But not only that. So that you don't fall prey to the whole, this is the only way that you can grow a business shit that you see on social media. For yeah. Because we see all that stuff and we go, well, we haven't done any of that. And yeah. we've done all right. We've done okay. We've done yeah. all right. So Yeah. Just, um, yeah, literally just, just what we've done, what we haven't done. Um, and if there's value in that, then, you know, sue me. Hopefully so. there'll be some some golden nuggets in there or something like that. Ooh, you know. Golden nuggets. They used to be a good cereal, they did. They did. They are quite a good cereal. No, it's not with cereal though. The problem with cereal is that they put a lot less sugar in now than they used to, so nothing tastes as good. A lot less sugar. Yeah, uh, I had some Frosties the other day, and I was just like, "They used to be better than that." Just cornflakes, isn't it? No, it's nowadays. just yeah, I just don't. Not a fan. It used to be really, really good. You, you, Do you know what you used to be able to get when I used to love as a kid? You used to be able to get chocolate covered Frosties. So there were Frosties yeah, with yeah. chocolate on top. Yeah, can can't you not get them? them? No, nah. you can't get chocolate Frosties. Not anymore. You can get chocolate cornflakes, but they're not with chocolate Frosties. frosties yeah, you know, yeah, they were like sugar. actual Frosties with chocolate on top. Yeah. Annoying, really. It is a bit annoying because a uh, sugar bomb over there that would have been nice. We uh, we used to be big on our cereal, didn't we? We used to, I used to love know. cereal. You used to love it, but um, don't train hard enough anymore to warrant eating no, it. No, no, no. So. That was back in the day. That was back in the early days, were not it? When we used to golden the glorious. Yeah, the glorious. Yeah, just one with the old gang. Yeah, no. just uh, oh Betty. Yeah. Um, what was your favourite cereal back in the day? Um, well, chocolate frosties was one. Um, I used to like golden nuggets. It used to be really good. Um, yeah. What other ones were there that were really? Uh, I'm sure they used to do like a cocoa pops. They do cocoa pops. No, as in like, but it was a special one, and it wasn't. It was some like shells. Was it shells? Cocoa remember. pops, cocoa rocks, cocoa rocks. They tasted a bit like Weetos, but I wasn't a fan of Weetos. Weird. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Weetos. No, but I think cocoa I, rocks. Do you know why yeah. I think I had a? a I, I didn't like Weetos. Is because when I was growing up. I once uh, found a moth in my bowl of uh, Weetos. Well, that'd be it then. So I think that put Straight me off. Straight away. And another thing that I got put off with, do you remember the, do you remember the TV show The Queen's Nose? Mm-hmm. So I was, I was maybe like, you know, 21 when I was watching it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was maybe like 11, 12, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I was eating a, a chicken drumstick, like a chicken drumstick. And there was something really gross on it, like where... Like somebody just started growing this really long beard, and it really grossed me out. And uh, do you know since then I can't eat chicken drumsticks? You don't know this. Yeah, I know you can't eat chicken off the bone. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind a wing, okay. um, but a cold chicken drumstick. You know the ones that you'd get at like a, a buffet. Mm. Cannot eat them because it, it there's just some thing in my head. And even a warm one, I wouldn't eat a warm one. I just mm. can't eat a chicken drumstick. So there you go. If you want to get rid of Mike and you're around drumsticks. him. Pull out a chicken drumstick chicken and he'll, drumstick, he'll run yeah. away. Now, a turkey drummer. Very different. Jamie Oliver special. Yeah. Can't now get I, I would have one of those. So. Can't get me more. But yeah. American cereal can't be beat, though. American cereal is the Which best. one do you like? Oh, there's loads, mate. There are absolutely loads of them. But the uh, you do, you've do you got the Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks, Apple yeah. cinnamon. We went to Cereal Killer Cafe once, didn't we? Oh, yeah. We did, didn't we? Me and you? Yeah, yeah. There's one in Dubai. Is there? Dubai Mall, yeah. Is there? Cereal Killer Cafe, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, five pounds for a bowl of cereal. But hey, it's worth it, isn't it? Yeah. Remember there was an uproar about that. And I was like, yeah, but you're paying the same thing for coffee. Like, people always used to moan about, oh, it's five pounds for a bowl of cereal. It's like, yeah, but you pay three pounds for a coffee, which costs about and 12p. And it's the fact that it's a novelty as well. Yeah. You're going and sitting in, like, it's... Capitalism, isn't it? Anyway, yeah. that's not what we had to talk about. What are we had to talk we about? We had to talk about... So forgotten. Not everyone should be an online coach, Mike. Oh. So we're going to talk about 
the prerequisites of being an online coach. So I think obviously, look, online coaching has had a bit of a boom. A lot of people want to be an online coach. A lot of personal trainers want to go into online coaching. Um, and in a video last week, if these are done in order, which they should be, um, we talked about how some people are like, oh, I don't like being on social media and like you want to be an online coach. It's kind of like, well, <laughs> they kind of go hand in hand. So get over yourself. Um, but we can talk about online coaching and how not everyone should be an online coach. Much in the same way that not everyone can be a footballer. Not everyone can be a dentist. Not everyone can be a lawyer. Not everyone is skilled enough to do certain things. Um, not everyone can be a snowboarder, for example. That's a random one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, is it, it requires certain skills and certain, I suppose, personality traits, should we say? Yeah. I think, of being a good online coach. Um, and part of that comes from not necessarily being the great coach, but also the prerequisites when it comes to marketing, knowing your audience, all that sort of stuff, which I think is really important. So... Yeah, I think we'll start with that really, that look, don't assume that you can be an online coach just because you like fitness. Yeah, or what, uh, and what gets me is that is this one, when you get a, when you get a client who goes, oh, I won't mind doing what you're doing. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I won't mind doing that. I might look at doing a course or something. Oh my, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I know how that goes. Yeah, it's, it's one of those where I think it's, it's looked at and deemed as a really easy job. Um, you maybe have thought the same, maybe that's what you, you think, maybe people think that from the outside looking in. And my argument to that is always, well, anyone who's good at their job makes it look easy. Footballers make football look easy, but it's fucking not. Um, flying a plane looks easy. <laughs> just do that, don't you? Easy, just, easy. just pull up and pull that. Uh, easy, it is yeah. easy. Easy, yeah. yeah. And it's one of those where I think that online coaching is it's deemed that way. People think, oh, I post a little bit on Instagram, get a few clients. Let's yeah, like, I love that. Oh yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I posted for a week online. No, I love no that. No one's come in, yeah. Yeah, like I love that. No, do you know what? I think I... I'm going to hold off and I'll, you know, get a few clients in from Instagram first before I start to work with you. I've had that before. Yeah. Okay. And let me know how that goes. The, it's really arrogant, isn't it? It's yeah. really arrogant. It's like me going, oh yeah, I'm going to be a footballer. I don't like online coaching. I really like football. I'm passionate about football. So I'm going to be a footballer. Yeah. Mm. It's not quite going to happen like that, is it? No. Um, and, and when you sort of apply that logic to online coaching, all of a sudden you start asking yourself, okay, so what do I need to do then to be an online coach? What do I need? Because, we work with, with plenty of people who some people find it loads easier to get where they want to be. Some people find it a little bit harder. Um, we've worked with people previously when I was working with, with coaches from a fat loss and, and point of view who had to go back into their full-time job. And when they tried online coaching for a bit and they didn't make it work or PT as well, it's not just online coaching, it's also personal training, I think. Um, both as difficult as each other, by the way. But there's a reason that with personal trainers, I think over 90% of PTs fail in their first year. Yeah. So of those who qualify, 90% of them go don't make a career of it don't make a job of it which is similar numbers to be fair to those that actually go into football like when you go for academies and stuff like that very very small percentage of people actually make it right and well, make a living um, out of it there's that new documentary um, out called The Academy have you seen that advertised so they've gone into Crystal Palace Academy mm -hmm. um, and basically it's showing all the academy level and uh, apparently that there's like 200 like per academy intake or whatever mm -hmm. and two of them yep. make it on average, mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. That's fucking mental. And that, and to, to get to the academy, you've got to be pretty good. Yeah. You know, when I was there with, uh, you know, with the rest of the guys before my knee injury, we yeah. were all oh, yeah. we were all pretty good, yeah. Uh, yeah. pretty good standard. But no, you've got to be you've got to be amazing to get into an academy. And then literally two out of two hundred. And 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 1%, then and then so. it comes down to as well like the the mentality. So there's having the talent, and then there's actually having the mental fortitude to kind of stick with it and all that. Sort of, I've seen plenty of players because I actually did work in football like him um, who actually had talent but just didn't have the, the, the head for it Sigurdsson was one of them yeah. let's not talk about that yeah okay, no. don't mention him around uh, there probably get banned on YouTube for that no <laughs> but, we, we haven't done anything wrong but not even at that level even at, even before then even like you know you got, you got 17, 18 year olds who were I'm, I remember vividly one guy who <clears throat> joined Hull City when he was 15 he got signed for money from a, a, a smaller club and it got to his head and by 18 was, was released and never played football I don't think again. I bet and that happens to loads. It happens to loads. And I think it's the same with online coaching is you sometimes think that it's going to be easier than it is or you think that it's only going to require you to, you know, post a few posts on Instagram and people will come rushing in or you just have to give out a few little macros and oh, that's all right. Just tell them to eat less food. Um, And I think good coaches make it look that easy. Mm -hmm. Don't they? That's the problem. Absolutely. Like, um, it, do, it does look easy from the onset because... What what a client sees, or I guess, so so what a client will see is that they'll see you sat there talking to them for fifteen minutes or whatever, and they get in a training plan every you know two months. 
so to them, they probably do think it looks easy and quite a nice sort of thing because they know how much they're paying you. And then as a coach as well coming into it, if you're a PT, for example, and you go, fucking hell, like, some people are earning some some big bucks online. Like, why am I on the on the gym floor when mm. I could just go online and do the same thing? It's not the same thing. It's nowhere near the same thing. So <clears throat> it's in the same region of stuff, but it's the same as, okay, well, Dan was in professional football, but he wasn't a professional footballer. Yeah. Dan was, you know, the T-boy or whatever he was. Um, the kit ironer. Protein shake washer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's in the... It's in the same ballpark, but it's actually a completely different job because you're not on the gym floor. Yeah. You're not taking people through a session. You're not taking them through a warm up. Like you, you've then got so many things to add in to being an online coach. It's actually harder than PT. Online coach, mm-hmm. way harder, mm-hmm. way, way, way harder. You go into a gym and you're surrounded with fucking hundreds of people, members of the gym who actually want to be in the gym and want to train. And if they want a personal trainer, they're going to pick you out of the other you know, there's five or six PTs to train from. Mm. Cool. Like, you've got a good chance there. Whereas online, there's hundreds and hundreds, probably if not thousands of online coaches these days. Yeah. It's very, very hard to demonstrate what you're doing and to get yourself in front of people. Whereas in a gym, you get a job, you stick that fucking personal trainer top on with coach on the back and a fucking black coffee and BCAs in, in your hand. You, saw it you walk around strutting about and, you know, people know you're a coach. Yeah. But it's much harder online, much, much harder. Yeah, I think the prerequisites that we're going to talk about, so basically there were some of the prerequisites um, we'll go through. I think we've got five written down. Have we? Yeah. Oh, so you've seen, you've, I, I don't know what we've got written down. All right, well, I, was gonna, I was going to say we could name one and go back and forth and see what we came up with, see how many we came up with. Well, I've got the five. I just, I'll name them and then you can talk about them a little bit and we'll go okay, through them go together. On First off, so. prerequisite for being an online coach is you have to be prepared to put your personality out there online. Oh, I don't really know what to say about this one. Um... Now, you, if you're going into online coaching and you are not prepared to show behind the scenes or get your face on camera, this is a big one, getting your face on camera, like, oh, I just don't like talking on camera. Oh my fucking God. It's your job. It's your job to talk on camera. If you can't talk <laughs> yeah. on camera, how are you going to build any no like, or trust with an audience? And how are you going to demonstrate that you are um, confident in what you're saying and that you can back up what you're saying? Like it's it's a far quicker and easier way to build a connection. Yeah, than a video. I think people can. I know there are a couple of people who've done it very very successfully yeah. over like email and stuff. But again, they are the rarity. They yeah. are the unicorn. They are the yeah yeah. You, you can't know, you can't who you, makes it when he's twenty two. You, you can't know? use them as an example no. to go. You oh, can't. But they did it. Yeah, but they are exceptionally skilled at what they're doing. Yeah. You are not. Yeah. Like, and we're talking it again for the average one of the middle person who wants to be an online coach, right? Is that look, you're going to increase your chances loads by getting on video. And putting your personality out there and not being afraid to do that and knowing that you're going to mess up. And- I, I don't know whether this is another point that you've got, but you've actually got to have a personality. Yeah. Is that another point? Or that is, yeah. I well, I put the prerequisite is to have a personality that, again, slash you're prepared to put out there. Oh, yeah. So you've got to have a personality. If you are yeah. fucking dull as dishwater, again, you're in competition. You're essentially in competition with everybody. Like, if you are dull as fuck, like, you, again, are probably not going to come across the best on social media, which is essentially an entertainment platform. That's essentially what it is. Yeah. Now, if you are boring and you might think you're boring or whatever, people often know if they're boring or not, I guess. If you are, lean into something else. Lean into that a little bit. Lean into the, okay, well, I'm the no ego, no fucking fluff, but I get results. Lean into it, but you still got to be on camera. And if that is your personality, like... Like, like we get our personalities over and we say to the coach that we work with, you don't have to be like us. You don't have to copy us. You don't have to do funny videos yeah. or spoofs or you don't need to swear if that's not what you want to do for your demographic or whatever. You don't need to do that. But what you do have to do is get what you are over. And the reason why you need to do that is to build a know, like, and trust. But also so, so that you, when you are attracting clients, that you're attracting the right quality and type of clients that want to be there. If you're putting over something that's false, you're not going to get in the, the 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 client that you want to work with, and then if you don't get in the client you're going to work what, that you don't want to work with, a you're not going to be as happy and fulfilled in your job, and b they're probably not going to stay as long, and therefore are less likely to get you a result. And if they're less likely to get you a result, your business isn't going to grow as quick. Like we when we worked when we worked at Team Box, let's just let's just say the let's just say the words these days because they I say exist not anymore. So. Mm-hmm. Shame. Yeah, just wipe the tears from my eyes. <laughs> um, like 
there was us who really wanted to put the personality over and then maybe split down the middle the other half that didn't want to put the personalities on camera because it was unprofessional hmm. um you know and then just use those as examples of you know yeah. i guess um and the other thing is well like like you said there though is you've got to turn it up as well like it has so to be amplified you have to amplify that and, and and like mike said lean into it so your personality has to be there for one and two it has to be turned up a little bit it has to be that way. But, but like you said then about the videos, the spoof stuff, like all the stuff that we post is stuff that we have fun making and we would do anyway. Yeah. Like we would piss around like that anyway. Yeah. And it's just like, we just turned the camera on and filmed it. And we like that sort of style of humor. And I think that's where people go wrong is they try and copy someone else. They copy someone else's personality and it's like, yeah, that's not you. Yeah. You can see that's not you. Yeah. It should be very, very natural. And like, that's why a lot of stuff we do is done in one take. Yeah. People, people, I see people do forever doing loads of different takes. I'm like, yeah, it's because it's not you then. We ne- yeah, we never, like, this is this baffles me, that whether, like, I've heard people go, oh, yeah, I had to record it, like, seven or eight times. I can't remember no. the last time that we ever had to record something twice. No. I, ca- I can't remember it. Like, it's because it's it's us, it's our opinions, it's mm. our voice, it's us talking. And that's probably a good sign. It's probably a sign that you should use yourself with your content. Yeah. Is it, if, if this has taken me 20 t- attempts to get out and to say... You're not saying it right. You're probably not saying it how you would say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's exactly that, so... Yeah, you just need to be a slight am- amplification. So, like, obviously on camera, you're wanting to un- entertain. Like, our personalities are our personalities, but we, d- but but we don't sit there over over breakfast and be cracking jokes and stuff like that. But it's very much like any entertainer, did. you know. Oh, she did, mate. Be a bit a bit, bit more fun, a bit more fun. Wasn't it? Um, but it's the same as any entertainer. Like we like Ricky Gervais, but I assume that <laughs> when he sat at home with his missus, <laughs> yeah. that. You know he's got the wit and he's the dry humor's in there, or whatever, but it, he's not going to be cracking joke and joke and joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's he goes on stage or he puts out a sitcom or whatever, and that's he knows the reason of what he's doing at that particular moment in time. Yeah. So as an online coach, you need to understand what the reason is for what you're doing at that particular moment in time. You're there to entertain somebody, to build some know, like, and trust, mm-hmm. to get your opinion, your values, what you stand for over, and maybe to provide a little bit of an insight into what mm-hmm. you think about a particular certain subject. Like, that's what you need to be doing. But all we see is, I mean, I can't even, I can't even replicate it, but it's, it's usually monotone, um, just if you struggle just, to eat your protein eat yeah, a can of guff. tuna yeah. like guff that it's like there's not there's no hook on the beginning of it there's it's just blech, blech, yeah. you know thought they'd be bubbly because of the yeah. you know. but there you go so there's number one number two is what was it um, the laptop's gone off that's right I remember it don't worry, don't okay. worry. Um, is that you will be on your phone a lot yeah. like another thing that winds me up Oh, I just feel like I'm on my phone quite a lot. Yeah, yeah you, you will be. be. You're an online coach. Yeah. You know those you know those Just PTs? like if you worked in the office. Oh, I just computer. feel like I'm in the office a lot. Yeah. I yeah. feel like I'm on my computer a lot. It's it's that whole one that I get it from PTs a lot. It's like, oh, you know, I'm on my phone a lot. And I'm like, yeah, you used to be on the gym floor a lot. And you don't have that anymore. That's your only way to connect with people, you know, online, on Instagram, yeah. whatever. And you need to talk to the people around you. Again, I've had a bit before with my parents where they've been like, oh, you're on your phone a lot. You know, you're with us and you're on your phone. I'm like, yeah, but it's also a Thursday. Uh, and I would normally be at work yeah. and I'm here with you and I have to be on my phone a little bit, right? Is that give and take a little bit with it? And again, people around you have to understand that, but you have to understand that. It's your job. Like the fact that you're at home at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday, right, means that you may have to use that phone on Wednesday at 7 p.m. You may have to use it at 7 p.m. because you don't have a place of work. You have the flexibility to wake up when you want, go to bed when you want, all that sort of shit, right, that other people don't have. And if you want to be an online coach, you have to accept that your screen time is going to be higher. Your Instagram use is going to be higher. You're going to be on WhatsApp more than the regular person. Accept it. Do not fucking moan about it. It pisses me off. The amount of people that like got, again, 5, 10, 20 clients, just fucking like on my phone a lot. You yeah. think you're on your phone a lot, mate. Yeah. Don't even start. And it's like, well, what do you expect? You're an online coach. I don't get it. I don't get this whole, I don't like being on my phone that much. Don't be an online coach then. Just don't do it. Just, if you don't like it, go and do a job, be a farmer. Go and do something out there without a phone. Yeah. But don't choose a job that requires you to be connected to the world quite often. Simple as that. Yeah. It winds me up. We've got a farmer that's got a bag of grain. Yeah. A chicken and, chicken and a fox. You know, which should be a, get a, rid, no, get no, rid of the fox. animals then. Um, just get rid of the fox. Just drown the fox. Yeah. Fox is a farmer's worst anyway. Yeah, yeah. What's he do? What's the farmer doing with a fox? No, no. I, I think some of that comes from partners. I think people get friction from partners. And like you've just said, family members, parents, whatever. I think that there's friction. And, and I think that also, it, 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 because again, it comes back to the first one where it appears like an easy job. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, but yeah, but it's 7 p.m. You should be off your phone. Yeah, but I was, yeah. I was off all day. Exactly. But I, I think that I, I, I just don't think it's looked upon as, as, as part of your job. I think it's, oh, why are you on your phone all the time? I, I do think that partners will come into that. Like, have a word with your partner sure. then. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. Your partner should be in line with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, you should say, look, I am going to be on my phone more because I've got clients to look after and so on and so forth. And if I want the best future for us both, yeah. then. I'm going to have to do that. But uh-huh. like, like you've just said, I can, you know, take my kids to school every day. I can fucking be, off, yeah, go to a dentist appointment at 11. Don't need to book in holiday days. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, that's the price. That you, yeah. That's the, the price you pay. pay. And then like people, people just don't want to pay any prices. No, they just, like, well, it leads on to the next point. So the next point is not wanting an easy job. Hey. Like don't be an online coach because you want an easy job because trust me, it is far harder to motivate yourself to push yourself to be your own boss than it is to have a boss who's checking whether you clocked in or clocked out. Yeah. Infinitely harder. Can I stay in bed all day, David? Yes, you can, David. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. You in bed with yourself, David. Not. Um, it, it, honestly, like, I don't think people quite un- are ready for it either. I don't think anything can prepare you for it, but this whole concept of you are now the person responsible for working hard and making sure that you work hard and putting yourself first and you realise how much you procrastinate, you realise how much you put things off, you leave things to the last minute, the whole Parkinson's law thing, you know, work expands to, to fill the time you allocate it. When you don't have a boss telling you this time and, you know, you're scared of them and you're scared of losing your job, all of a sudden, you don't have that pressure. My argument to that is that, well, no, you will use your job. It's your job. They're your clients mm-hmm. and you're fucking up every single day you don't do something. Mm-hmm. People don't get that. Um, and it, it, that's in another thing that winds me up. This, is, this, is, this video has basically about, come about from things that wind us up. Yeah. Um, is this whole concept that's easy? Again, we get people sort of say, you know, that again, they've got 10 clients and it's like, oh, I haven't got enough time to do. Like, you have. Like, you're just, you, you, you're just shit at time management. What are you doing? Then? Because 10 clients is a quarter of a day's work. So what are you doing for the other five and three quarter days you should be working yeah. when you're working for yourself? Again, working for yourself, you're going to have less time off. Deal with it. Yeah. Just deal with, like, I'm sorry. Deal with it. It's just... It, what we're saying is the opposite to what everyone's saying because most people will go self-employed, more time off, laptop lifestyle. It's, no, in the future... Yeah. He says recording YouTube videos on a Sunday morning at 11am. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday though, yeah. Yeah, Sunday yeah. morning, 11am. Sunday, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah. like, in the future, yeah, more time off in the future. But I think we talked about this one on, a, on another video, I think. Um, you need to be pre- prepared to work hard now. Like... Work hard now so that you're off in the future. In, now, in fact, I didn't talk about it on a YouTube video, but I think we're going to. About what winds me up is when people get in and they get up to 20 clients and they take the foot off the gas. Like, yeah, that's another video. That, that's that's another on. video. But like, it's almost like it's so arrogant to think that, oh, that's it, me done now. Like, I'm, I'm done, I'm mm-hmm. good. Um, yeah, that, that work ethic required is, it, and, and the thing that I think people find difficult with it, again, it's because they don't have that boss. You know, everyone says, oh, I want to be my own boss. But, but they're it, shit bosses. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're shit bosses. Slick boss. Like so, they don't they don't hold themselves accountable to certain things. But it's also the fact that you've got to play every role within the the business. You're the CEO. You're not CEO, but mm. you know you're the you're the coach. Yeah, people upstairs. Yeah. You know in the, the ears. Oh yeah, probably, probably on, the human. People on the phone. <laughs> you know they're the hands. You know, um, it's, you've got to be everything. And sometimes people are not good at certain elements of it. So you've got to be the coach. You've got to be a trainer. You've got to be um, a marketer, which you might not be very good at. You've got to be an admin. Yep. You've got to be an accountant. You've got to be a business. You've got to have some kind of business now, I guess, in terms of pricing or, you know, um, packages or how you're going to structure stuff. You've got to be the graphic like, designer. You've got, you've got to be, be the graphic copywriter. Designer. You've got to be a videographer, an editor. Mm-hmm. Like, you've got, to be a lot of, you've got to be a lot of things these days. So online coaching, you think it's just handing out some plans to some people. It's not. It's a ton of jobs into one. And and you've got to go out your way as well. So the, one of the other points there is that you've got to have the work ethic. And, and what we mean by that is the desire to improve. So like we said before, you've, Copywriter. Got, to, you've got to want to be better at copywriting. You've got to want to Winnish. learn how to, to edit videos. No. <laughs> Tap play. Tap play. Um, you've got to, initially anyway, unless you've got a, a shitload of capital that you can pay someone to edit videos, record them for you, whatever, you've got to know how to use that software, how to edit things, how to make them look better, what's working, what's not. So all this time people have when they're like, oh, I just don't have time, I've got 10 clients, I don't have time. I'm like, well, what are you doing? Because you should be spending half of those days researching YouTube and stuff, how Dicking to get around this, is what they're doing. how to edit videos, how to, and, and you should be treating it like a real job and, and not a lot of people do. And I think that work ethic is lost on a lot of people where they go, I don't know how to do this. And I remember when we used 
used to when we used to sit there, we used to go, oh, we don't know how to do this. Our, our next Inevitably, thing, you'd go and learn. Yeah, so. our next thing wasn't, oh well, we'll leave it then. It yeah. was, well, how do we do it? Yeah, and we Google it, we YouTube it, whatever it would be, and. Like I learned how to edit videos and how to use Final Cut Pro, like just off my own back. I think Harry, yeah, I did as well. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think Harry like taught me a little Harry basics, it, and then yeah. I YouTube it, and there's like a two-hour tutorial, free one online on YouTube, how to use it. Yeah, just you, watched it. Yeah, you used, to, you used to sit there and do all of that, and and it just baffles me that people don't have that desire or work ethic. Like I don't love video; I just learn how to do it because I knew it was yeah. important for the business. Likewise, yeah. with things like Canva, you learn how to do it. You get you know courses, you do Simon Mitchell's course, you learn how to use things like that, and it just baffles me that that people don't have that desire and yeah. to, to improve again. Copywriting was a huge one for me. I spent eight months in a copyright mentorship, not because I wanted to necessarily be a copywriter full time, yeah. but because I knew it would help my business yeah. and our business and what we were doing. And I still use some of those lessons today. And I just think it's odd that people are very quick to do a, the latest nutrition qualification or they've done their PT qualification. Think they, they think they can make it as a coach now. Nah, you, you need to put that work ethic in again, constantly. It, it, it's, it's people want to do the bare minimum mm. and, and what we've approached and done it as is we will do the maximum yeah. we, we've done the maximum that we could do which again you know there's probably we've maybe gone and, and pushed maybe I, know, I say have we pushed too hard or do or, or do we just need to wipe our vaginas it's sexist so, can't say that these days you know well you can be a man with a vagina so, so that's fine well that's fine that's more inclusive then isn't it well anything. exactly it's more so, inclusive yeah. so I'm just saying wipe our vaginas yeah. because technically one of us could have one could have one by Definitely. <laughs> so, um, you know, statistics. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so like, I can't even remember what the point was. But no, we always, we selected to do the maximum. Yep. Like, if, if we didn't have something to do, we, we but found- But why would you not? We found, yeah, we found <laughs> stuff to do. We thought, okay, well, we've got a bit of time to film some content now then. Like, once stuff's been yeah. done that we ticked off or whatever, like, we, we did the maximum. We did the most that we could do. Because- for all of those watching this is the minimum that you can do is that like are you where you're you're at and do you think that doing less than that or the same as that is going to get you to where you want it's, to be it's that whole thing isn't it of like the, the saying of like shooting for the stars you reach the moon or whatever it is it's that whole thing of like well if you work to your maximum and some weeks you're going to only do the bare minimum you'll still be okay yeah, yeah. whereas if you aim for the bare minimum and some weeks you can't do that yeah. you're going to fall well short and, and we see that in co coaches all the time it's fucking we see that in so it's, many it's coaches. mad like it's almost like pe like people are getting into it with no passion. Do you know when we were getting into it? Like, we were passionate about it. And we, we, and we, we still are. We were passionate about the shit that was out there. We were passionate about yeah, yeah, yeah. how badly it was being done and 100%. we wanted to improve the service and stuff. Whereas people are coming into it now, I think, just going, I want to make money. 100%. That's all they're coming into it for. That's we, why. Like, I, we, were, we were doing stuff like because we know we wanted to help somebody. We, we wanted to help the f usually the former version of yourself like mine mm. certainly was it was i wanted to help the, yeah. the the younger me the the early 20s me and all of the things that i'd been with because early 20s i used to hate how i looked um i used to train i'm not even joking i used to train two to three hours a day um i would be eating clean um i would be spending i had no money at the time but i would be spending i would i would have the uh diet way of course um, CLA fat burners BCAs mm. I would take everything right and I had no money I was skin and I would be thinking why can, Why am I why can I just not get anywhere and I thought I was doing everything right because I was following advice from certain people I thought I was doing it right because I wasn't eating badly but I never ever got in shape I, I did the whole six meals a day I only ate brown rice and chicken and broccoli but it turns out I was eating too much brown rice, chicken and broccoli that I never was in a deficit. And then I would have a cheap meal on a weekend. I just never got anywhere. And I just used to feel so shit. I just think I'm just that shape. Like I'm just not destined to, to get yeah. in shape. So when I learned actually- To accept it. Yeah, to, when I learned to accept it, um, I wasn't shaped once. Um, <laughs> no, so when I learned what I was doing, I thought, do you know what? Like I wish I'd had someone say this stuff to me, like mm. to give me a shake and to be like, fucking why are you eating brown rice it's fucking st stale like it, it was yeah. it was that passion to get into it and it was that i'm gonna make this a success it was i've got bills to pay i'm gonna make this can't fail mm. it was i am gonna fucking graph so when i had a full-time job i was getting up at five i was getting up at five to do bits of work to listen to a podcast on the way to work I used to have my earphones in while I was at work, listen to podcasts, listen to podcasts on the way back, work at weekends, work on the side. I, when I first set up my first, my first ever, um, let's just say six months to a year of setting up, setting up coaching. I had a 40 hour a week job. I was in a contest prep at the time, which involved me doing an hour's cardio a day and an hour's training a day, stupidly, but I had a poor coach. 
Um, so I was doing that. I was sitting my first year of my sports science degree exams. I had the BTN Academy exams that same year, and I got qualified level two, level three as a personal trainer that same year. Mm. And I was coaching 10 people, and I was reading research. I was creating documents. I was setting stuff up for myself. I was also doing business mentoring all at the same time, doing all of that at the exact same time, because I wanted to fucking make this my career. Yeah, Whereas you, you wanted an easy job, didn't you? That's funny. It's easy. Fucking, yeah, it's mental. Yeah, and and I I'm gonna throw this out there and say if you work that hard and you've got a bit of personality and your ethics are in the right place, I actually don't think it's too hard to stand out. So whilst it's not an easy job, I no. actually think if you've got these things about you, these prerequisites, I actually don't think it's going to be hard for you to rise to the top. No. Like, because the ones that do go away and do stuff and attack it and look into stuff and, and um, take pride in their content and have a personality and work hard and ask for more stuff to do, those people do the best. Like, yep. those people do the best, hands down. Like, so I actually don't think it's that difficult to rise up. No. Because I don't think it's been hard for us to stand out. Like, really. Do you? No, I don't think it has. I think it's just, I I again, it's just I, relentless. It's just been, you know, we don't we don't have weeks off where we don't post content regularly. We don't have those... We, and we've always been thinking about that sort of stuff. And I think that's the key thing. So just to go over the five things that we've written down. Football, so isn't he? Prerequisites of being an online coach is having a personality and amplifying that personality online. Number two, having a work ethic like an actual proper work ethic, like this is your life, you know, this is your job, like you're your own boss. Imagine you had 10 people working for you. you how would you treat it. them? Yeah, you create it. Not wanting an easy job, like this is not an easy job. Do not ever think it's an easy job. Um, it's not, it's ridiculously hard. You're dealing with human beings, their emotions, their their needs, their desires, all that sort of stuff. It's difficult. The one we haven't t- talked upon, which I think is kind of links into all of it, is ability to think for yourself don't rely on other people telling you what to do all the time. You have to be able to think for yourself, look at data, look at trends and go, is this working? Is this not? And make decisions based off that. Um, and the last one, which I think is one of the biggest ones that people don't give enough, enough thought into is just that not afraid of being on your phone. It fucking winds me up. Really winds me up. Yeah. Online coach, to close the name. The, the, the um, thinking for yourself is another big one, mate. Like, oh yeah, like thinking that, of yourself rather than just copying one. other people and copying like, other coaches and what they do. But even to the even to the point where it's like, is this post okay? You tell me. Yeah. Do, do you know like when you get I'm asked, not a babysitter? <laughs> is this post okay? Yeah. What? You tell me if it's okay. Post it and find out. Yeah. <laughs> like, and the the answer is well. Does it do what you, do you know what, want do you know, it to do? You know the thing with that though? No, the post, whether a post is okay or not, you only know once you posted it. Because I think Simon Mitchell said this: every single post that you post is going to get that you don't post gets zero likes. Yeah, zero engagement. Do you know when you are like post it? What's the worst that's going to happen? Oh yeah, like so thinking for yourself. And if you can't think for yourself, you should have somebody think for you. Which yeah, means go and you be, employed. be employed. Go and be employed. Yeah, don't be don't be a self employed online coach if you can't think for yourself. It's madness. Mental. So there you go. It's probably a long one, so we'll leave it there. Was it but, long? Um, I feel like it might have been long. But anyway, hope that helped. Um, if members you want group. more, if you want more gold nuggets like this, um, we have our members group, which is only forty nine pound a month. Serial reference. Um, serial reference, where we have our one to one live calls every single week on a Monday, which you can join. We have them with our one to one coaches that we work with on all this stuff on a one to one level, unlike other people who just chuck you in a group um, and they charge you about seven hundred quid a month <coughs> rather than fifty, like we are. But anyway. The option is there if you want it. Yeah. We'll leave it there. Done.